three. Action! <laughs> oh. So tell us the detailed action steps that you took to make Promel a reality. So first, once we like narrowed down the problem to what we have now, we first determined if that it like if it was real, like if other teenage girls actually did face the same problem. So we surveyed over 200 teenage girls all across the United States, and the feedback was overwhelming. Like everybody, like so many people said that they were facing this problem. Um, so we felt like it was a problem that was definitely worth pursuing. So we looked at other solutions that existed, like marketplaces, competitors, etc. We analyzed what we liked about them, what we did like about them. And then we came up with some of the key features that we felt were unique to the teen segment, and then we started to outline the product design. Nice. And in terms of the product design, uh, tell me more about that process. Yeah, so Rhea and I did like the entire um, design of the UI and everything like that. So that did take us a while, but once we did that, then we contacted a local developing team and we had them de develop the app for us. So for head starters who might not know, so UI means um, user interface, right? So it's basically how the app looks like. Um, yeah. And in terms of uh, the local team, how did you find them? How long did it take? So we actually, we got really lucky. Um, we were talking to a friend about the app and they introduced us to this developer team. Oh, great. And, and like when you met them, like how did that go? Um, we, we just like, we told them about the app and they seemed interested and we were definitely interested in working with them. So it was just a good fit. Okay, so if you would obviously have to like re, like if you had to like design the app from scratch, what would you do differently now to like make the development process quicker? Um, well, I don't know. I don't think this would make the development process quicker, but I think that it would have been cool to be able to code the app myself or like Rhea and I could have coded it ourselves because we would have been like learning more about like CS stuff. And also like we would have better control over how the app looked because we would know exactly what we wanted. Because when you're talking to like when you're outsourcing, there's always going to be some miscommunication. Yeah. So I'm the genie from Aladdin. I'm allowing you to go back in time from and start from scratch. What would you do differently with Promel? Um, well, I think, like I said, like coding the app Code. ourselves. And also in the beginning, we were both so shy to go and talk to people. And I think I would say like, it, like forget, like, don't be shy, just talk to people because you never know what opportunities are going to come out of that like yeah. we were just we were just at a conference in a competition in delaware of uh, two weeks ago i think and at first when we got there we were so shy to talk to people and we we're like no there's no way like i can go talk to this person because there were like high name people there like entrepreneurs and investors and people like that and so we were really scared and shy but after some time, we saw other people talking and we were like, okay, maybe we can do this. So we went and talked to them and some like we made some really great connections there. And so I think if we had, like in the beginning, if we had started out with that attitude, then it could have been. But not bad, like you're 16 now, so you're just going to use that from now on. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. why you're a head starter, Nishka. It's also cool because for me, also, I was like very like shy to like talk to people. But now like once you start talking to people and like you're interacting with like older people your confidence naturally increases yeah it's really strange though because i'm not a shy person in general like if there's a crowd i'm the first one to go out and make friends so like it was something i learned about myself that i was shy to talk to all these people because i guess when you're young like you fear rejection more than when you're older because you're like this is out of the ordinary for young people to be talking to these people because like adults they're always talking they're always making connections but like we aren't used to like like we're we were in a world where like it was just like study for a test do your homework do this and then now it's like we were pushed in to a whole new world of these things so oh yo 
oh, that makes so much sense. Nishka, we need to change it. Like, we should maybe like start another <clears throat> company where we just make young people talking to adults. Like, you should start a challenge. <laughs> like, you know, like people do the challenge, like, go talk to like one person you don't know, go talk <laughs> to an adult that you don't know. And like, talk about like some topic like business, opera, <laughs> something like that. And I think like another thing was, you're so scared of being wrong because like these people know so like they have so much more experience than you and like if you say something wrong you're like oh are they gonna think that like i don't know anything things like that so nishka what are some of the opportunities in the retail sector that you're most excited about um well there's so much new technology coming up um but i think that the wearables market is very exciting like i was just reading about a little device on your wrist that can help control diabetes and that's so cool because there's so many exciting new things coming up like that. And like there's the Fitbit, there's like Apple Watch, all of those things. But it's so exciting. Oh. Talking about, you know that device that controls that, that helps with like diabetes. All Indians will buy it. Because <laughs> like literally everyone I know is diabetic. Like all the <gasps> older people. There's like something with the Indian diet. <laughs> so yeah. It's, I think it's way better than sticking a needle inside of yeah, your body. Sure. So if someone wants to get into like the e-commerce and retail industry, what advice would you give to them? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't go in with the wrong attitude. You can't go in overconfident because you're just going to be like shoved down to the ground. Um, so you have to go in, I think, with the attitude like I'm here to learn and to get better and like you definitely can't be someone who gives up easily because then you probably won't get far I, yo, I love I love that mindset so when you started from Elwood like you guys excited like oh we're gonna get like 10,000 users in like the <gasps> first month did that happen like that overconfidence I think that there were definitely times when we thought like wow this is going to be successful but there were also times when we thought like no one's going to use our app and it's just going to be a waste. So I think that like there was enough of a balance between the two that eventually we were able to find the middle ground where we are right now, where we're like, well, if it works out, if like we continue on an upward trend, then that's great. But if it doesn't, then we just have to find out what we have to fix. Hey Head Starter, I really hope you took something valuable from that episode. Check out my other episodes where I interview other successful and inspiring young people in the world. I'll see you next time. Unless you don't subscribe. Oh, subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs>